Okay. <laughs> Grace and peace and praise the Lord. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited for the Minnesota, Wisconsin, Dakota Council. Uh, Bishop Richard D. Howe is our diocese right here in this church. But our assignment is continuing a great assignment. Excited about what's going to take place this week and glad to have you here. Hope you enjoy yourself while you're here. Our speaker today is no other than evangelist Grace Gates. We are so glad to have her. We're looking forward to. And our topic today is we cannot survive in isolation. We have a purpose and God workmanship. So women are living and operating in their God-given gifts, talents, and his anointing. Learning about the manifestation of the manta operating in their lives. So we'd like to welcome Evangelist Grace Gates at this time. Praise the Lord. As always, we give honor to the spirit of the Lord. We give honor to Bishop Howell, uh, Pastor Betty Howell, and um, my pastor, uh, well, the chair, uh, Pastor Johnson, uh, Suffolk and Bishop Johnson, the first assistant chair, uh, my pastor, Suffolk and Bishop Monica Parche, and Bishop Smith. And to all of you, we're so grateful and so honored to be here. As it was mentioned, my name is Evangelist Grace Gates, and my assignment is um, we cannot survive in our isolation. We have a purpose in God's workmanship. And our theme scripture being Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. And that's who we are. We have, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we have been created in Christ Jesus. Jesus has made it possible for us to be new creatures. And now God begins, once we are saved, he begins the process of what? Making us new. We're new so that we can manifest who he is, his image, and his likeness in everything that we do. That's why it says we were created for good works. So the good works is works for me. It's, it's a good work, works that are springing from a place within, from this new nature that God has given us. God, so God is in the process of making us and equipping us to do what he has called us to do. And it's a work, but yet we're able. I'm going to be talking about, and it was mentioned, um, this session will help you to understand God did not create us to walk or fight alone. We are one body with different purposes, but all parts are needed to survive. God has equipped us with gifts and talents to use as we fulfill our purpose. And we all have a purpose. Some of us, we, some of us have said, well, I'm, I don't, I'm not for sure what my purpose is. But I say to those, just keep walking. Just keep walking in God, and God is going to manifest what it is. And many a times, you know, sometimes it'll be when you least expect it, but God is with us now. We have the Holy Ghost. And as this journey that God has given us, and as we learn about God, as we learn and get in tune to this new nature, this Holy Ghost that he has given us, God is going to do great things through us things that we can't, couldn't even dream or imagine because God, the spirit of God dwells within us. So again, when we look at that, I just first wanted to talk about isolation. I looked up the definition for that and it says isolation caused a person 
or a place to be or remain alone and apart from others. And we know God, the scripture says, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm just going to quote this scripture. We are a body with many members. So when we look at isolation, God didn't call us. If we want to fulfill our purpose in God, we can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. God didn't make it. He didn't design it that way. But when we look at isolation, there are purposes that God, at times, that God will isolate us and use us for, like, for example, in our time of prayer. It's important as people of God that we spend time in prayer. Prayer is communicating, and, and you all know this, prayer is communicating with God, but individually, we have to intentionally set some time apart to isolate ourselves in prayer because it's our communion with God. It's our praying with God that we're going to be able to better understand him, to better understand, to discern his voice. So there's so much connected to that. And those are moments, that's the time when we do need to be isolated. And also too, God would isolate us sometimes, send us apart so that what? A time of preparation. And an example for that is when, when I have to stand here. An example of that, I'm so sorry. An example of that is, remember when the scripture says that Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness? God had a purpose for that. It was in that wilderness, if you notice, he went into the wilderness before he went into his full-time ministry, what he was called to do. And that was a time of preparation where he was alone and he isolated. He was isolated, set apart with prayer and fasting. Guess what? So, so it, God does use isolation. So again, our time along with God, God is always doing something and we have to be intentionally, that's our part, that's our job and that's a responsibility that we have because again, this new nature that God has given us, if we do our part, we'll see God do his. So we're, we're thankful for that. So as it was saying, we cannot survive in our isolation because God didn't create us to survive. Uh, Genesis 2 and 18 says, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. So to help him, and God did this because God had instructed, he had instructed them to, uh, to be fruitful and to multiply and to replenish the earth. And to do that, they couldn't do it alone. So God made the woman to help him to accomplish his task. I know sometimes, and I like to move, but okay, I'll stay with you. There are times when, you know what? We like being alone, and some of us are introverts, and we say, well, I do better by myself. That's true. Sometimes we do, but we still have to remember we can't fulfill purpose alone. We cannot fulfill it alone. As a matter of fact, sometimes you have individuals, they set themselves aside and they say, well, you know, and they don't come to church. They don't come to the body. And the enemy is a, it's, it's, it's a place that the enemy used to isolate them, whether it be through hurts or disappointment or something that happened. Because once we isolate ourselves, the enemy is coming. And he's going to start doing a work. And if those grounds and those places that God has established us in will find ourselves digressing, we'll find ourselves digressing and going back to those ways because guess what? The enemy is going to cause and bring something up that when we'll find ourselves saying, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And next thing we know, the power, the, the, the faith that we have, we'll find ourselves sitting in a place, depressed, no faith or anything. So we have to be wise and remember. And, and I'm going to say this, we have to grow to the place where we're not ruled by our feelings. 
our feelings to get us in many places that God doesn't have. But that's the important thing about this Holy Ghost. It helps us to, to, to grow, to mature, where we're no longer ruled by our feelings. We have them, but not ruled by them. So, and it's important that we understand. So when we see ourselves or we discourage about something and we find ourselves, well, I don't feel like going to church. Well, I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. We have to say to our feelings, it's not about what I feel. I'm here. I'm a new creature in Christ designed, guess what, to do the work of the Lord. Because now that means it takes the, my, it takes the focus off of what I feel and place it on what God has said. And that's what it's about. Because as we move, as we're strengthening, as God, in order for God to do all of that, it's about us learning how to move with the word of God, how to depend and lean on the word of God, to have faith in it and watch God works. He's going to do some great things. He's going to do some great things. If we do our part, God's going to baffle our minds because that's just the God that he is. So I want to talk about, read the scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, very familiar scripture talking about the body chapter 12 verse 12 and verse 14 and it reads for as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is is Christ 14 for the body is not one member but many I thought about when I was preparing for this, the scripture came to my mind, Psalms 139 and 14. And it says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When we look at that scripture, the, the psalm as he was, he was in awe as he began to look at the human body and he saw how God had structured the body, how he had structured. She, she, he saw the wisdom. And the knowledge of God, putting every place, putting every part in its place. And not only putting it in the place, but causing all the parts to function together. And I was thinking, when we look at the body parts, we know we have a nose, we have a mouth, we have a ears, hands, we have feet. All of them has a purpose. God designed it that way. But here's the thing. By themselves, they're just parts ineffective, can't do anything. I mean, how would it look if you see a hand or, or nose running? It can't. But you know, and speaking of that, talking about can't, we as the people of God, we have to be careful and remember, we, there are members in the body, different members. And what that means is each member has a, has, has a part. We, me being, I would say, a mouth, can't require the feet to act like me. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes we require things of people that they can't do. And we try to make them do something that they're not able to do. So we're ending up frustrating them. And as a leader, me as a leader, it's important that I understand. And the Lord had to help me to understand that they're not going to do it the way you do it. They're not going to do it. But as a leader, it was my job to understand that the, they were a part of the body. And, and, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So we, sometimes we mean well, and we try to help. But in the midst of us helping, we're trying to require something of them that they're not able to do. The eye can't be a feet. The hand can't be an eye. So the scripture later on in that chapter, it goes to say that's why the hand can't say, and I'm paraphrasing, the hand can't say to the mouth, I have no need of you. No, he can't. Because just like in uh, Psalms 139 and 14, the, the psalmist marvel at how God had structured the body. God also has structured his body. The body of Christ. God decides and he placed the members in the body as it pleases him. So none of us can say to another member, you're not needed here because we can't do that. 
And if we find ourselves doing that, then we're out of place. Because again, every member is important. And we have to understand is God so structured and placed the members in the body at it, at, as it pleases him. But also, even though they are in, a, in, in the body, they have to be taught and they have to be trained because this is new. This is new for all of us. This new walk of life, this new creation, it's a journey that God uh, is in the process of making us and shaping and molding us for purpose. So we have to understand, and here is the thing about God. God loves the body. The scripture says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, that when Jesus ascended on high and how he left gifts, he left gifts of people, people what for the body. God placed those people as gifts by giving them certain abilities and qualities, guess what, that the body needs. And the scripture says that their purpose were, when we look at that, and let me read exactly what that says. He said, um, the gifts of people Jesus gave to the church, he gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So God placed them in each of those individual abilities, abilities to help the body do what? The scripture says, for the perfecting of the saints. And that means to train and equip the saints in different areas and the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body. And we have to understand, you know, um, I was sharing with someone, sometimes we feel, well, I got a right. I don't feel like doing this and I don't do this. But you know what? Really, when we really mature in Christ and we really get to the place in, that uh, God would have us to do, we will find out. Our rights, and I, I want to say this right, we do have rights, but when it comes to the things of God, we have to line ourselves up with the word of God. So even though I've heard people say, God died so that we can have a choice, and we do, but to fulfill the purpose of God, if God say move, we move. No longer is my feelings required. I have a right not to say no, because I've been called to a place in God. And with that place, with that calling, there's an obedience that God is requiring of me. So that means that my, again, what I want to do has nothing to do. Everything that God says, we have to grow to the place. And it's, I don't know if we would ever do it in this life, that we, we can do things in obedience. Obedience to God. What does the word say about this? And that's what we're finding ourselves doing. So he said that. So when we look at that, when God has gifted us, and we'll talk about that. I'm going to talk about the gift in a little later. When God has gifted us, we have to understand the place that he has called us to, God is requiring faithfulness. He's requiring, again, obedience. He's requiring of us, guess what, that we do our part to, 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 to grow in this calling, if I can say it this way. And we have to understand it's not about us. It's no longer about us. God, these positions and these people that God has gifted, place abilities and gifts in for the body, it's just that, to edify, for the perfecting of the saints, to mature the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edified and the building up of the body. So that means it's not about us. Sometimes we want to make it about us, but it's not about us. Because if we read this, it's about the body. What can we do? How can I be faithful to this calling so that the body will be edified, so that the people of God will be trained in a certain area? And so when we look at this, I, I really, I praise and I thank God because what it taught to me as coming up in God, as a young saint, the Lord helped me to understand these are people that he has called to this place. And so I had to work with them. 
honor their position, knowing that God had called them to the place and to sit and to listen because they had what I needed to grow. And even though we are different members, but yet the scripture says God takes one word and feed the whole body. So wherever we are, whatever our callings are, we need to come to the house of God to sit under the word of God to hear what does say the Lord. Because it's all a part of our making. It's all a part of our, of, of, of our, of our maturing. So it's for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we have to remember every member is important. And you know another thing, we have to give people time to grow. Sometimes we want people. Now, here's the thing. It took me 10 years. I've got to move. I'm sorry. It took me. <clears throat> it took me 10 years to get to a certain place. And I'm running. I can see God. I can hear God. I can move with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? Here come an upcoming saint. Now, I want her. You should, do, you know, to move. No, no. I have to have that conversation with myself. It took you 10 years to get here. So now you got to you got to work with them. And as a leader, and again, I'm the leader of the women's conference. The pastor has entrusted in my care those women. How I handle them to handle them correctly as their leader is my job to sit as that watchman to look at each and every one of those women and to be in the place that I need to be in God so that God can show me their giftings. Because many people don't know what there is. Now, we don't tell people what the gifting is, but as the president, guess what? I do the directing. So that means pulling them to the side close to me. Placing them, God is sure, not telling them what they are, but allowing them to work in that place and training them. Why? Because they're gifted. They have a purpose and they don't know. And sometimes as a leader, you know, you have those that are that, hard. The more you help them, they just keep pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. And, you know, they'll drain you if you let them. But God, you know, as a leader, we find ourselves, Lord, give me wisdom because they are important too. And sometimes, you know what? I had to just step back and let them go. And when they came back to be right there to welcome them in because they are part. And I found out sometimes people, because of what they've been through, they haven't been delivered yet, but they're still gifted. And when God shows us that, so it's working through all of that hurt, all of those things. And how do we do that? To tell them to keep coming to church, to tell them to keep coming to hear the word of God, to tell them to keep coming to Bible class, to keep coming to Sunday school. Because here's the thing, the Holy Ghost in whoever is doing the teaching is going to speak to the Holy Ghost, to the, to the thing that's in them. What does that mean? The life in that word, the word of God is life. When the word of God goes forth, there's a quickening that occur. Sometimes have you ever been in a place where the word would go and you go, oh, what was that? Quickening. God bringing that thing to their attention. And here's the thing about God. When God speak a thing, all you got to do is plant the word. God gives to increase. See, sometimes we want to see the increase right away. But all we got to do is do the word because the word is life in that word. The word's going to do what it do. That's why we got to keep them coming. Keep them coming because God will address the thing that they need. Because guess what? He called them into the body. God knew what was in them when he called them. And I was thinking even about me. There were so many crooked places in me when I got saved. I wasn't raised in a, so many crooked places. Didn't know I was, they were crooked. But coming and sitting under the word. Guess what? Just coming and sitting. And then I'm like, ooh, okay, I can't do that. You know, so God has his own way. That's why we, we have to be responsible. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Even when you don't understand, just keep coming. Even when you don't feel like it, just keep coming. Because if you keep showing up, guess what? It's God, God is doing a work. 
We don't always see what he's doing, but he's doing a work. He's doing a work. And we, so we have to understand our parts is important. I wanted to share about many times we do not know how powerful our gifts are until we are placed in situation where we have to use them. And so God strategically put us in situations where we discover some gifts that we have or how to perfect them. Perfect and we perfect them as was mentioned by using them. Sometimes that's why it's important that we keep coming and it's important that we know the voice of God and we stay in prayer because here's the thing. God is strategic. He's a strategic God. He set things up, put things and people in place to guess what? To bring out of us what he has in us, what we're not even aware sometimes that we are. Sometimes we have to be careful about moving, taking upon ourselves to move out of place because of hardship. Because sometimes it's in the heart thing, sometimes those heart places that God is doing a work. He's building, he's strengthening. Because guess what? He placed us there. So guess now, you know, we have to use because we want to survive. It's about us surviving. So we want to survive. So we begin to use gifts. As those gifts come up and God places us in there, we begin to use them. And we realize, well, I didn't even know I had that. So it's important. I want to show you. I believe the scripture says the word of God was written for our example. So I want to show you an example of this, how God places people in position to help the body, to edify the body. And to do this, I want to show you David. David, we know he was anointed a king. He was anointed by Samuel to be king. And talking about strategic, how God is strategic. God, one day, he sent David, David's father, sent him to the camp. He sent him to the camp to take food to his brother. His brothers, it was three, he had three brothers that was in the camp. When David got to the camp, they were fighting. And they were fighting. It was this giant called Goliath. And uh, it was called Goliath. And the scripture says that the, the, the Israelite was in the heat of the battle. But when this giant came and he stood before them, guess what? They ran. They looked at what they saw and they allowed it to distract them and they ran. But here's, about, here's the thing about God being strategic. David went to give the food to his brethren. And David heard the Goliath challenge the army of God. And David heard it and David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's, you know, defiling the army of God? You see how he thought he was going to take his brother in food? God had it planned for David because God had placed in David what was needed to kill the giant. He, he was the one that God called to kill the giant. And in David was a shepherd boy. God in the shepherd in the backwoods, if I can say, was training David for that time. That's why we can't move out of those hard places because it's sometimes it's a place of training. And so what he did is when David said, David was like, no. Mm -mm. Now, here's the thing that I laughed at this. All the whole army of the Israelite saw the giant and ran. David said, not so. David was so offended by this giant that he said, I'll kill him. He said, I'll go against him. And when he went and, and, and Saul, let me tell you, he went before Saul. And Saul said, they told Saul, Saul said, you are but a child. And this is a giant, a trained giant, a champion. David began to testify. 
and to tell him when he was in the backside of the woods, and I'm paraphrasing, how a lion and a bear came and how he killed it with his hand. I want to just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I don't want to bring, forget these points. So Saul, when David did that challenge, I want to read with you what uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse um, 37, when Saul told David, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paws of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver, deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. And verse 38, and Saul, Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with the coat of mail. Now, from this, Saul meant well. Saul took his armor and placed it on David. He wanted David to go and to fight the way he knew to fight. Here's the thing. People mean well, but we have to know our skill sets. We have to know what God has gifted us with. And again, because David said, and it took a lot of courage, at least I think so. Look what he said to Saul. And he, David, he took, verse, verse 39, and David gird his sword upon his armor, and he assailed to go, and he, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David took them off. Now, again, it's important that we know our skill set and people mean well, but don't fight. Try, don't let them cause you to fight with what they fight with because you're not gifted in that area. You so, so if you go and you try to fight in a place that in a, in a thing that God hasn't gifted you, you're going to be defeated. So it took a lot for David to say to me, I can't go with these. The scripture says David went to the brook. He took, he picked up five smooth stones. And I said, now, Lord, who would take five stones to fight a giant, a champion? And God said, David. And the reason why, because he knew his skill set. And David had history with God. David wasn't confused. He knew it. And so the scripture says he went. He confronted that giant. But before he could confront the giant, the giant tried to belittle him, intimidated him. You know, it's like those times when God calls us to do something that's challenged and it's beyond us. And the enemy began to cause to speak doubts and things in our in our minds to try to intimidate us and cause us to draw back. We can't do that because we have to learn from David. David said he knew what his gifting was. He took those five stones that really looked at like he was crazy. Come on, David, really? But he knew what he was gifted in. We as the people of God, we have to know our gifting. Know it. We're going to know that as we spend times with God and as we come to the house of God. And God places us in places and situations where we get to use them. If we can remember every situation is a preparation for what's, up, what's coming. And so David, he took him and he went before him. We know that guess what? He took that thing. He took that rock in that sling and he do it. And he do it. And here's the thing. The spirit of the Lord got in it. God got in that gift and he killed that giant. And you know, when we, so when we look at our gift, we're gifted. But we have the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God. As we use it, we'll see God do miracles. We'll see God destroy giants and people like, because it's the anointing that destroy the yokes. But that's why we got to know. We got to invest in knowing what God has given us so that we just like David can be skilled 
and what we call to do. Even when people say you can't do it, but we got to know our skill set so we can do. Because here's the thing I loved about David. He did that for the people, right? But I wanted to show you when it comes to the gifting about what David did. The scripture says, when we look at David and he went before that giant, the giant tried to, again, like we said, to intimidate him. Let me see, how do I get He tried to intimidate him. But David knew. He knew his skill set, but he also knew his true weaponry was God. It was God. And he trusted God. He had his confidence in God that God would give him the victory. Now, a lot of times we say we believe God. David stood, took a step to faith. And he showed he believed God because he said, you come to me with a sword and with a, 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 a sword or, or what, all that other physical stuff. Y'all know what I'm saying. So, but he, this is what he said. He said, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, who you defile. He said, and he shall. Look what he said. Talking about when we go into victory and we know what we know. David made declarations before he even killed. He told the giant, he said, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. This day, I will smite thee, declaring things. Take thy head from thee, and I will give thy corpse unto the fowl of the air and to the wind, the wild beast of the field. Guess what? Said it before it ever happened. And because he knew his God, he knew God was faithful and God was with him. So he began to declare and he and here's another thing. When David, when that giant, the scripture said he didn't wait for the giant to come to him. He ran. He ran to it. He ran to because he trusted God. He knew God was faithful. He had God, he had experience with God. And it's our experience with God that's going to cause us to stand in places. Guess what? Everybody else is running. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm standing because God is faithful. I'm trusting God. Even when we don't know what he's going to, you know, all, how he's going to do a thing. But God told me, he said, you know what? I never told you to try to explain, to know how I'm going to do it. I told you to trust me. Standing. Because the giftings of the body, and we as the people of God, we have to realize, I matters. You matters. God strategically placed you in the body. He placed gifts in each and every one of us before he called us. The scripture said before we was born. Now that we have the Holy Ghost, God's going after what he placed in us. He's going after it. And guess what? Sometimes going after it mean that we got to, guess what? Cry some things. But you know what? God, there's a determination, a persistence that God needs for every warrior. And God places us in places, heart places again, guess what? To develop that determination. To cause us to say, I'm going to stand even though it's hurting. I'm going to stand through the tears. Because when, and when we do that, God's going to, that next situation down the road, we're not crying. We're not wondering if God's going to do. We're standing in the promises of God. We're believing God. So what? You see, it's a body. God died, Jesus died to free us from the penalty of sin so that we can be in a place, the place of God, the place where we were born to, to fulfill destiny, to feel God's purpose in our lives. And when you look at the church of God, I thought about when, when, when the, the scripture says the church being a body. And it took my mind back to, and I'm digressing a little bit. The scripture said, when God made man, God took his hand. He formed him out of the dust of the, out of the, dust of the ground. Man was formed, but he had no life. He had all his parts. He had everything together. He had no life. The scripture says, Jesus, God blew into his nostril. 
the breath of life. And it was that life that God was going to cause the man and the woman to do what God had called them to do. And when we look at the body of Christ, God, on the day of Pentecost, we as a people, and I mean people in general, humanity, humanity was dead in trespasses and sin. But because God had chosen us from the foundation of the world, on the day of Pentecost, God breathed. And guess what happened? Then the body that he had died for became alive. They can now hear God. They now had the nature of God. And guess what? And now here, here come God. And God is saying, I've given you what you need. I've given you everything that you need. Now I need you to just walk. Just walk in it. Because learn it. Because guess what? The body needs us strong. The body needs us functioning. And sometimes you're going to have to stand alone. But that's okay. God is with you. The scriptures say, if God be with you. Who can be against us? And it comes at times when we got to put the word into action because this Holy Ghost that we have, this breath of God that has given us life, that causes us to understand God, that causes us to know his voice. I know his voice. God has caused me to discern and I hear his voice. And it's in the hearing of the voice of God that he brings clarity, that he gives everything that we need to accomplish the task. The breath of God. God has, you know, I thought if you look in the book of John, you will see all the job descriptions of the Holy Ghost to teach us. Job description, teach us to be a helper and a comforter when we need it. To cause us to understand. And even when we don't understand, guess what? The Holy Ghost intercedes for us when we can't. So it's important that we learn about what we have. And we know it's not about us. Some things we endure and we stand for the body. So that the saints can be edified. God said when you are strengthened, strengthen the brethren. So that means when God take you to a thing, the love, the compassion that God showed you, now you know how to serve the people. Now you know how to show it to the people. So God, this is, is an awesome, it's an awesome walk. It's freedom, freedom. It causes us something, but it's worth the cost. And if we as a body can grasp what God has given us to know that we need one another, we can't survive by ourselves and walk in purpose. It's going to take us some time to get there. But when God say, when you are strengthened, established, help the brethren. Now you have grown to a place. Reach back and help those. Even those who's not going to always let you help them. But guess what? Wisdom says, back off. Because you know what? If they love God, they'll be back. And Lord, when they come back, let me be here. Let me love them. Let me love them. So that means as a leader, again, talking about them feelings, you got to watch those feelings. They'll get you out of places. They'll get you out. And they'll cause you to not to it's fulfill God's purpose because it's about helping the people so that we can grow. The body of Christ, the church can grow in numbers and not so much growing in numbers, but for real, for real. Growing in the spirit of God so that we can help others, so we can build up the body. God knows what he's doing. Can he trust you? Can he trust you to be faithful? Can he trust you to trust him to establish you in those harsh places? Can he trust you to trust him to, ex to help you to stand even when you don't want to. And it comes a time, you know, the Lord had to help me because we knew what the word of God says. And sometimes my, my stubbornness was so strong, I had to go into the fast. You're not going against the will of God. So I had to fast. 
And I had to pray and ask God to help me because it wasn't about me. It was about the body. Now, it took us some time to grow to that place. So when we realize as the people of God, God has entrusted into us these places. Learn what he has given you, the gift that he has given you. Stay in prayer. Come to Bible class. Come to Sunday school. The opportunities that you get to learn because God has people that he has gifted in place to train you, to help you, even when you don't know you're being trained. Just keep coming. Just keep showing up because God wants us to be strong. A lot of things that are happening in this world today, we know that the scripture says that it's going to happen. But sometimes I often wonder, is this because we're lacking? We're not where we should be. Some things we can change. We can change some things if we stay in our place. And if we allow God to use us to do the work that he would have us to do, God is faithful. You're needed in the kingdom. You have a purpose. Don't miss your purpose. Because when you miss your purpose, others others miss, uh, miss out because you're not in place. And if you look at that, an example of that, when you have a structure and there's bricks, pull one of those bricks out. And watch the surrounding bricks. Guess what it's going to do? Yeah, it is. So we have to be serious about our walk with God. And we have to know he has a purpose. Don't let the enemy talk you into isolation. And make you think, well, I'll just stay home. And I'll pray by myself. The God called the body. And you're not a body by yourself. You can't function as yourself. You might for a moment, but it's only going to be for a moment. But we have to be watchful. We have to be prayerful and know God has called us to this place. He has a purpose for our lives. So stick with it. Stay with it. And know God got you. Amen. Praise the Lord. in our hearts, burn within. Okay. Okay. Then our hearts burn within. Thank you so much, Evangelist Kate, for that word. God did not create us to be isolated. We need each other. So that was just such a great word. Uh, we have about 10, 12 minutes Amen. Thank you, Evangelist Gates, and thank you, Evangelist Brown. Just a few announcements, and we are transitioning into lunch. Amen. Um, I want to encourage you, if you have not registered, to register. Amen. Um, Those of you that are online, please make sure that you register. We do want to receive an offering. I won't say take it, because I might have to I might ha- need Elder Green to help me take it, but, <laughs> but we ain't going to take it today. We're going to receive an offering. And um, since I'm mentioning Elder Green, if you're going to give cash, you can certainly come up and give. We have three ways that you can give. We have Givelify. That's under the MWDDC of the PAW. We have Cash App, dollar sign, MWDDC07. And you can also go to PayPal and pay. The quickest way to get to any of all of those uh, different paying methods is to go to MWDDC.net and click on Donate. And then you can... Uh, the various ways will come up and you can give that way. 